Hey everyone, welcome back with the new lecture with IUIC 1725 2017 edition. And we're still in resources requirements and now facilities and environmental conditions, which was before in 2005 edition 5 3 accommodation and environmental conditions. And now it's 6 3 facilities and environmental conditions. Facilities which related to equipment, instruments, building itself, and others also. But environmental conditions, which such as temperature, humidity, vibration, and others, facilities and the environmental conditions such as building, separation of lab units, equipments, and instruments, and temperature, humidity, vibration, and others, shall be suitable for lab activities and shall not adversely affect the validity of results. So it's very important to be controlled well. Requirements for facilities and environmental conditions which are necessary for performance of lab activities shall be suitable. And here in this clause, we talk about the facilities required to keep the environmental conditions suitable for lab activities, such as thermometers or data loggers, any equipment required to keep the environmental conditions suitable, and any tool required to do this shall be documented. So, all facilities required to keep the environmental conditions suitable for lab activities to ensure the validity of results shall be documented. And there is a process inside the lab should be followed to get these requirements or these facilities. First, every unit inside the lab shall prepare a list of requirements for facilities or equipments required to keep the environmental conditions suitable for their lab activities. And then they will send these lists to the technical lead who will revise this list and will collect all of them in one list then he will send this list to the, t the lab head who will approve this list based on the lab budget and then he will resend to the purchasing officer who will start the process of purchasing and evaluation of tenders after that will be based on technical and price evaluation for all provided companies and lab shall monitor, control, and record environmental conditions that may affect the validity of results. If the lab determines that any, in any of these environmental conditions will affect the validity of results, so in this case, they shall monitor, control, and record this environmental condition, such as temperature traceability. Temperature is one of these environmental conditions that may affect the validity of results. So it shall be monitored, controlled, and recorded. Monitored, it will be by calibrated thermometers or data loggers. And you shall record the result for this monitoring in a specific form. So if you determine that any of environmental conditions inside the unit will affect or may affect the validity of results, in this case, you shall monitor this uh, environmental condition and that will be by a specific equipment, such as temperature traceability by calibrated thermometers or data loggers. And for all determined environmental conditions, you shall have a specific form. As example, temperature. You will determine the temperature for rooms and also for the equipments need to be monitored because there is a different criteria between the temperature in rooms and in other equipment such as freezers, fridges, uh, water baths and others. So you will prepare two forms for temperature traceability, room temperature recording form and equipment temperature recording form. And inside these forms, you will write the required temperature, required temperature for the room, as example, 20 degree plus minus 5. And equipment, as example, minus 20 degree for the freezer, as example, minus 20 plus minus 2. So you will determine the temperature for these equipments or for the room every day, and you will record the temperature that you will get. And it should be within accepted criteria. 
If you found that the recorded temperature was not within the acceptance criteria, so in this case you shall stop the analysis and try to take action to eliminate this risk. And that's also related to the risk-based approach. If you found this risk, you should find action to eliminate this risk. As example for the room. Room including instruments. And these instruments need a specific temperature inside. So, if the temperature became high, in this case you should take action by reducing the temperature using the air conditioning. Freezers. Freezers contain or including the standards. And standards need minus 20 degree. If the temperature became high, in this case you should, you should take action to fix the freezer and transfer the, 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 the standards to another freezer until you will fix this freezer and that will be under maintenance so you shall take action to eliminate this risk because that may affect or it will affect the validity of results and that will lead us also to a very important point measures what are the measures taken to control the facilities to prevent any contamination or interferences on lab activities? So, measures to control facilities shall be implemented, monitored, and periodically reviewed. So, when we determine the measure that will be used to prevent any contamination or interferences inside the lab, in this case, these measures shall be implemented quickly and monitored and after that periodically reviewed and these measures shall include the following points access to and use of areas affecting the lab activities as example for that if you make specific card for each unit to allow only personal working inside this unit and as example also in microbiology unit and in microbiology it's very important to prevent the microbial contamination because that will affect the validity of results so you can make also double doors for the lab and specific clothes before entering the unit and that will prevent contamination microbial contamination so it will not affect the validity of results and these measures also shall include prevention of contaminations or interferences on lab activities such as there should be a separation between incompatible testing and also between standards of different methods or samples or chemicals in the fridges or freezers or rooms because that when you prevent any contamination or any interferences on lab activities and results and also as example there should be a separation between extraction sampling standard preparation and instruments to prevent any interferences on lab activities also different standards or samples should not be kept on the same fridge or freezer and also in microbiology they will make swap tests Swap test for benches every day to prevent any contamination or interferences on lab activities. And also from these measures, separation between areas with incompatible lab activities. As I mentioned before, there should be a separation between standard preparation, sampling, extraction, and also instruments to prevent any contamination or interferences on lab activities and results. There should be a specific room for standard preparation another room for sampling, another room for uh, extraction, and specific room for instruments. I just gave some examples about the measures shall be taken to prevent any contamination or interferences on lab activities. But inside your lab, inside every unit, you shall make risk analysis. From this risk analysis, you will get any risk due to the environmental conditions, due to these environmental conditions that may have an effect on the validity of results. Then when you will get these risks, you will find actions or measures should be taken to eliminate or reduce these risks. And that also shall be recorded in the risk register form. How to implement this inside the lab? It's very easy. First, you shall prepare a specific form for each environmental condition that may affect the validity of result. Once you determine the risk due to environmental conditions inside every unit, you will find the equipment that will measure this environmental condition. Then you will monitor this environmental condition daily and record this in 
that form so it will be different from lab to another lab these environmental conditions will be different from lab to another lab and also from method to another method from matrix to another matrix so based on your risk analysis you will determine these environmental conditions and you will prepare a specific form to record these environmental conditions daily also, all facilities required to keep the environmental conditions suitable for lab activities shall be documented as I mentioned in the beginning. Once you determine the environmental conditions required to be monitored inside the lab, you shall find the facility or the equipment required to measure this environmental condition and you shall purchase this facility. So that will be related also to the purchasing requirement. And very important point, risk register form. Once you determine the risk due to environmental condition inside the lab, you shall find how to eliminate this risk. And then you will record the risk and the degree of this risk and the taking action to eliminate this risk in the risk register form. So you shall prepare the risk register form and record in this risk register form also the risks due to environmental conditions. And there is no need for a specific procedure for facilities and the environmental conditions. And also in ISO requirements, they didn't say or mention that you shall prepare a procedure for facilities and the environmental conditions because in every method you will use to analyze your target analytes, you will write the environmental condition that will affect the validity of results and how to monitor and record this environmental condition for this method. So that will be in every method inside the lab. So there is no need to have a specific procedure for facilities and the environmental conditions. But you shall have a procedure for cleaning of lab wares, waste management, and chemical storage. You shall prepare a specific procedure for each one of them. And that will be different from lab to another lab based on your lab activities, based on the requirements and the procedure that you will follow inside the lab. So there is no need also for me now to prepare a specific procedure for you and you can adapt this procedure. You shall follow the procedure that's followed inside your lab. But just you will take your right step how to do this inside your lab cleaning of lab wares how to clean your brass wares inside the lab how to manage the waste inside the lab waste disposal and also chemical storage how to store the chemicals inside the lab because all of these points are very important to prevent any contamination or interferences on lab activities and very important point all equipments used to measure the environmental conditions inside the lab shall be calibrated every year as example thermometer or beta loader it shall be calibrated by a content calibration lab every year and you shall keep calibration certificate for each equipment and also label label on each equipment including the calibration date and also the due date for calibration after one year and if it's accepted or not can be used or not and you can find out from this lecture that risk based approach or risk analysis is very important you shall determine the risk due to all lab activities inside the lab from sampling up to giving the results to the customer and once you determine the risk you will find out how, how you will find out how to eliminate or reduce this risk in case of facilities and the environmental conditions once you determine the risk due to environmental conditions you will buy the facilities required to measure these environmental conditions and then you will monitor these environmental conditions and record in a specific forms and by this you will prove to the assessor or quality lead or or to yourself that there is no environmental conditions that will affect the validity of your results or on lab activities because you already eliminated these risks thank you and see you in the next lecture inshallah